take two because my file was corrupted from the first one. It happens. But uh, again, June is in the books, so here are all the games that I beat for June. The very first game that I beat for June was Joe Danger 2 The Movie. This is basically <laughs> an obstacle course where you are a stuntman and your object is to get a great take for the movie. So you're given a direction of what you're supposed to do and you have to meet the objectives. So you have to get so many stars, hit so many robots, do whatever you need to do, maneuver around the obstacle courses, and there's playable credits. The only thing that really irritated me was the playable credits. You have to do the tutorial. There's a double jump that you need to have. And if you don't have the double jump, then you are screwed and you have to go back. So they should tell you in the beginning when you're popping up the tutorial, hey, get this double jump before you go through the rest of the game. That's the only thing that I wish they did. But other than that, it was a fun game. Um, short, sweet, simple. It takes a little bit of time because you have to maneuver around, but I liked it. After that, I decided to play a fighter, and it was Shaq Fu. I'm uh, sorry, everybody. I know you, some people don't like Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu is a good game. Um, it literally is a horrible fighter, but it's not terrible to where you're going to be like, wow, this is really bad. Literally, it's Shaq. He is a basketball player who somehow magically can fight <laughs> and does really well. Um... It was the era of the 90s where every single basketball player wanted to be in a video game. Michael Jordan, you saw him in a basketball game slash platformer slash he shot basketballs at enemies. And uh, Shaq wanted to be part of that too. The commercial is funny if you can find it online. I never played it and beat it on Game Gear so that was in my backlog. All these fighters that I decided to go through. And uh, check this off the backlog, and yes, I did watch the movie Shaq Fu right after. <laughs> Sorry, Yugoslav. Can't help it. It's the cheesy, corny movie that deserves to be watched. Right after Shaq Fu, I played Mustache Boy. This one is a weird arcade game. It's a little bit of Qbert with a little bit of platforming. Um, it's very difficult at the very end. There's a lot of trial and error in trying to figure out what you need to do. So if you're not into platformers that get really, really crazy at the end, you will be okay, uh, the beginning stages. Your object of the game is to make all the colors, whatever color is the opposite of the starting color. And then you have to double jump or whatever and watch out for the little creatures that are trying to attack you. Some of them shoot, some of them gain speed when they get closer to you. And others just explode, so you gotta watch out for that. You also need to collect mustache, all the letters for mustache from balloons, and then you can get a bonus stage. I like it. Made me rage. And the only reason I counted it on the list, because not all the arcade games are counted on the list, was it wasn't like you just kept going with the progress. You had to start the level over again every time. So <laughs> if you're not into rage mode, this is not up your alley, but it's a fun little arcade game. Find the ROM, try it out. Maybe it's online as a browser. But uh, it's a hilarious time. The fourth game that I played was SNK Gals Fighter. Uh, this is a Neo Geo pocket color game. Um, it's all the female fighters from all the SNK game fighters that were throughout the time. I think like late 80s, 90s. But uh, yeah, it's really fun. I like it. I was surprised how good the fighter was. Um, you have everybody that you battle and you're... Object is to get to the end person. She is a little weird. <laughs> you get to her and you're like, okay, let's battle. And she's like, oh no, I don't have a weapon. Oh me, oh my. And then she starts shooting lightning bolts at you. <laughs> you're like, what the hell? <laughs> I just told you. Oh man, she's getting real in this one. <laughs> it's funny. I laughed. I, ha I had a good time with this. So whoever made that character, that was that was a funny character. I, I 10 out of 10 for this fighter. Had a heartfelt moment here and there for the fighter I picked. I don't really remember the fighter I picked. I do remember a lot of the Samurai Showdown and a couple other fighters, but I was like, I'll pick somebody I've never seen before. So if you know who I fought with, let me know in the comments down below. 
who it was. I have no idea, but I like the fighter. Definitely, I recommend this. After that, I played a game called Bug Snacks. This is a cute game. I liked it. Kind of reminds me of the early N64 era vibe where you had open world and your object was to help little creatures here and there. Think of like uh, Banjo and Kazooie, that kind of era where um, you have like creatures that have weird little voices and you're trying to figure out what's going on in the world. You're a journalist and you're going to go visit an island where a bunch of your fellow colleagues are trying out some new snacks and for some weird reason they are great but they transform your body into something so you go there to investigate is it a viable source of food for the rest of the colony back home and you crash land because you get attacked by a pizza creature it looks like a little butterfly but it's made of pizza and then you find the mayor of the city and you're like, what happened? He's like, I don't know. Everybody's just gone. I can't find anybody. So you have to investigate. It turns into a weird scenario, but it's really cute. I love the game. I recommend it to everybody. Um, it Even though it looks like a kid's game, it's really not. <laughs> it has a lot of adult themed tones to it. Not sexual, but like moments of like oh they're med they're having a marital spat over here and then this one is trying to be a diva character and so it's like it's kind of like um avenue q for everybody who's ever seen avenue q avenue q is basically muppets for adults so i kind of think of it like that it's not for kids all the way per se i say teenagers but uh it depends on the person i can't tell you how to parent your kid but I do recommend that you try it and play it yourself for, for one time. The only thing that was weird to me was you didn't battle the main bosses. Like, there was characters and creatures that you could avoid if you wanted to. You could literally just keep going down the main path. You don't have to battle the pizza creature that attacked you. You could avoid that the whole way. It's a side character, side creature character thing. All the side quests are literally all the big beefy characters. So I didn't know that. Because <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just having a good old time, going along, collecting everything. And so what I did was, I didn't 100% it, but I did get all the bugs just to challenge myself because I was like, I really don't have all the time to keep going with everything, but I do have enough time to battle all the, the creatures, get all the bugs, and complete my journal. So it's like kind of like Pokemon a little bit. You want to collect everything. So if you like Pokemon or if you like Banjo and Kazooie or any of the early... N64 era type games, just right up your alley, you'll have a good After that, I was in a handheld mode and I decided to play The Three Stooges. Um, thank you, Jim, for letting me know. I forgot about this I, and I remember now that it, it is the NES game literally ported to the Game, game Boy Advance. Uh, it's kind of like um, a, a game show where you're, you're there's a hand and you have to stop it on top of something, but uh, the story is you are the Three Stooges and an orphanage is about to get shut down by a big bad guy, a banker who wants his money. And it's, I think 6,000 or 5,000, I can't remember now off the top of my head. And it sounds easy. It sounds like you're just gonna beat the game within five seconds, but when you have the hand, you could chance it and try to get like a large amount of money, but right next to them are the banker and they tax you and they take your money or you could lose a day. And it starts building up fast. So the object is to literally just get the hand to stop on the chance one or jobs and get really good at the jobs. It's uh, you're either a doctor, a waiter, <laughs> you're going to battle a boxer, or you're doing an eating contest of some kind. And they're fun games. You literally are taking scenes from the TV show slash movies. Um, and you have a fun time with it. If you love the Three Stooges, you will love this game. I did. I had a good time. I reminisced and had a lot of memories of watching this with my popo. It's a good good game. Short if you lose really fast, but it took me about four times to beat it. So definitely keep trying and keep trying to beat it. Um, I don't know how much you have to do to renovate the or orphanage. I just got enough to save it, but if you... I think there was enough money. If anybody knows in the comments, please let me know. How much money it was to renovate maybe it's like a few thousand more like 10 15 but it's pretty hard to get up really far i barely just made enough to save the orphanage so definitely recommend this one as well again i went to the game boy advance and it was zatch bell electric arena 
say that five times fast. This is a hell of a fighter. It literally is an anime show turned into a fighter. Uh, think of Death Note where you have a book, like the character's holding a book, and then he finds a little minion. And then apparently everybody found a little minion. <laughs> and the little minion gives you powers or the book gives you powers. I'm not sure exactly what. I don't really watch the show. But you'll see the little minion fighting on top of the, the guy or the girl fighting. And they'll shoot with their book electricity or a, like a battling it out with something. And then you want the little minion to fight the little minion and to stop it from blocking. Because the little minions, they block for you. And so you want to knock them down so they have an, an equal path to just like take out that person. I liked it. It was a fun game. Um, a little bit of a curve to learn all the mechanics because you have two things to think about instead of just yourself. You have to think of the little minion. What's the little minion doing? And then once you're good to go, it's, it's not a bad fighter. Then I decided to play, and I'm going to probably destroy this name, uh, it is Yuragami Generation. If I destroy the game name, please let me know in the comments below. But it's a photography puzzle game. Uh, you literally get a puzzle, you'll get like a list of what the client's guest wants, and you have to go shoot that, sh that shot. So it could be like, the list could be like a, a leaf, a, a cat, a sign that says hello, uh, a tattoo on a person's arm, and then it could be like a monster in the background. So you have to do it. Even though it has a time limit, it technically doesn't stop you if you don't meet it within the time limit. You just don't get a bonus. So if you want a chill game, don't worry about the time. If you want to challenge yourself, it can be a game where you're like testing your time and trying to get the best time and speed run it. Um, I did the chill mode version. I wasn't really in a time crunch because I was like, I want to enjoy this game. I really don't want to make it like a stressor. It's a fun game. I can see why a lot of people get lost because it can trick you into thinking that this is the symbol that you need to find. But in reality, it's like two symbols down over on the side somewhere just chilling and you have to go find it. So take your time, try every symbol, try angles, change your angles because there was one time I had it just actually had to change the lens. You get different lenses. I was like, okay, so it is a symbol. I, I, I definitely know it's a symbol because it's the only one that there is. And then I just switched the lens focus on the symbol, and then it finally went through. So sometimes it's just a little bit of trial and error until you finally get what you want or the angle that they want for you. But I recommend the game. Try it out for sure. And I was on a kick for Battlefield, so I decided to play Battlefield 3 for the Xbox 360. This one was very glitchy. Um, for those who don't know, I had my team AI going through walls. I don't know why. I downloaded the game, it started up great, and then in the middle of a combat situation, one of my character AI team members just was going through walls. And then I couldn't open doors, so I had to restart the mission, and it was very frustrating, but I don't know why. Uh, it was a very glitchy version. Um, I literally kept yelling at my team. I was like, what are you doing? They were walking through cars, they were walking through people, they were doing whatever they wanted to do. I don't know why I keep breaking games. I have no idea. It's just, just a, a guess, a, a talent of mine. But <laughs> every time I would do something, I'd be like, what the hell is this doing? Damn it, here we go again. I gotta restart this part. And so it was a weird thing, but I dealt with it because of the story. The story is a great story. Um, you're literally a, a soldier who is being interrogated by somebody and they said that you are a traitor and you you messed up the whole situation. Shit hit the fan and, and you don't know what happened. So literally what you are doing is you're being interrogated. So you're recounting your, your past events to them and you're telling them that there's a double agent and it's not you. That it's this other person. They're like, no, we, we clarified that this is not the person that's doing it. We think it's you. So you go through all the scenarios and you need to figure out who it really was, if it was that person. And... It's an amazing story. I definitely recommend Battlefield 3 if you've never played it. 10 out of 10. I, I like it. Bad Company, Battlefield 3. I'm enjoying some of the Battlefield games. Now I did try a couple of the newer ones. Really didn't like them. So we'll see what happens. I gotta play a couple more and see if I'll beat those as well. I go through kicks where I want to play some games and I wasn't kicked to play Resident Evil. So I started with Resident Evil 3. 
this is a sad disappointment. I am so sad that this remake was made, how bad it was. Um, okay, I will say it's not a bad game if you don't count it as an original remake. If you just count it as the reimagining that they said it was, it's good, but it's not great. It's like Resident Evil 6, where you literally just push forward for a good chunk of the beginning of the game, and you tap a button. I don't like games like that. For Resident Evil games. For other games, it's cool. I don't mind choosing a narrative, whatever it is, but I expected something completely different when I heard that they were announcing the remake. I was so hyped for this game because Resident Evil 3 Nemesis is my favorite out of like the sequels. Resident Evil 1 is my, my all-time favorite because of how the atmosphere was in the mansion. And this was so cool to see the, the city in a different perspective for Jill and I loved it. <sighs> Nemesis didn't scare me. No point in this whole game was I scared. There was a few jump scares here and there because I didn't realize he was that close to me. But other than that, I was literally just blazing through this game. I didn't have any problems. It, I did it in one sitting. That's how sad it was. <laughs> I was like, I kind of knew what I was already doing because I saw another, another game collector play this, KJ Del Rey and Retro Mikey 78. But even then, you still have to execute it. I don't care how many times you've seen a, Re a Resident Evil game. There's still the execution part and a lot of people fail at that. And I never failed once. I never died once, I never had an issue. I literally realized that Nemesis didn't chase you after a certain point because he had to do another cutscene somewhere farther away. And I was like, I could literally sit here. Resident Evil 7 did that as well. For those who don't know, there's different monsters like the mother. If you just stood there right before the stairs, she's just like, <sighs> that's not scary. That is not scary at all. So another sad disappointment, love the game but I don't count it as the original, and now I want to play the original uh, RE3 uh, Nemesis, and I want to play the original RE2, but I need to play the remake first because I want to keep the vibe going of the remakes, and like Village and all that because of the new game mechanics before I go back to tank controls for sure. After Resident Evil 3, I decided to play Resident Evil 4. Yeah, I didn't want to go to tank controls. Technically, this is tank controls, but it's very linear. Um, you're just worrying about hordes of zombies, kind of like Resident Evil 5, but not as much action. It's still got a creepy vibe to it. I love this game. It's a great game. <laughs> There's so many cheesy one-liners. It's hilarious. Where did everybody go? Bingo. Such a classic game. Such a classic game. That I'm, I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that this is a great remake. And we don't get another sad cut of, like, so much content. But, uh, yeah, man. Good game. Ashley is annoying. I hope they fix that to where people are not yelling random stupid crap all the time. Like, uh, she she gets old after a while. You're like, how many times are you going to yell at me? I understand. I, I know you're scared and you need help, but damn, stop yelling so much about how you need help. Leon, help me. <sighs> That's the only irritating part. You get lost every now and then, but you figure out where you're going. It's linear. You pick two paths. You go get the key. Go back to the other one. Not that difficult, but I enjoy the game. I love Ada. I love Leon. They're great characters. They're hilarious. I don't know how Leon keeps going back to Ada, but hey, he knows something we don't. After UFC 3, I wanted to see what UFC 4 looked like, so that was the next game that I beat. And it's a little glitchy as well. I don't know why. Um, I would play get some of the fights done, and then I wouldn't want to keep fighting the same people over and over again. And the game would get mad at me, I guess. And apparently it was like, no, you need to keep fighting the same person. I'm like, it's boring. Give me another opponent. I'm allowed to choose and say no to a couple people, but as soon as I would say no to one or two people, it would crash. And I would lose progress, too. I, this took so long. It shouldn't have taken as long as it did. Because every time I would say no, it would crash. I would lose a few fights and have to retrain which is also annoying because you just learned a, a mechanic and you have to retrain and learn that mechanic you have to redo all the progress redo all the stupid stuff that you had to do for the fight right before and it was annoying so i don't know why uh, it was that glitchy but it is it's very glitchy hopefully it fixes itself and we don't have to deal with this anymore but i don't know i give up on this um i liked ufc3 better I like certain parts of the fighting and the training and the coach. He's really cool. I like that. If they had blended them both together where this, the social media aspect was there plus the coach, 
that actually you'll see five there you go take the social media part take the coach blend them together you got the the best of both worlds and i would love that game but ufc four had a great coach scenario for the career but i'd rather have the way that we had it for beginning of all this other stuff so i liked it i just wish i didn't have to do so much progress Right after that, I wanted to play a Walking Dead game. Um, the, I played the Season 2, because I already had played Season 1. And I didn't want to have to backtrack, and I already knew what the story was about. So, it wasn't a big deal for me. I literally just kept going. So, I played Season 2. I won't spoil the story, but wow, cried a lot. <laughs> there was moments where I'm like, damn, man. Why do they gotta do that to Clementine? But uh, in this this game you uh you meet a new group of people and you have to adapt and learn from the group but you do meet a familiar face from the first season so you have to deal with a bunch of crap you meet a character who is kind of like negan with lucille so you have to deal with that character who is like negan and figure out how to get out of that situation scenario so yeah it's a good game i enjoyed it i liked it not recommended for many people who don't want to see Clementine get hurt, but it's part of life and you gotta deal with it. And it is a little bit more difficult than the Michonne series. Um, that one, I didn't die as much. This one I died a little bit because I keep forgetting that she's a little girl. So, yeah. It's like kind of like when I was dealing with Joel and I had to go to Ellie. Oh, damn it, I can't slug myself out of the situation. So, yeah. I recommend it for you. Try it out. And... For all those who love Clementine, she doesn't die. Just FYI. Then I went back to Game Boy Advance again, and it's Spy Muppets Leg License to Croak. It's basically a 007 Bond game, but for the Muppets. <laughs> Don't know why, it's hilarious. Um, you're Kermit, and you have to battle characters that are from the Muppets, and they're supposed to be like... Um, like the Bond girl, like Miss Piggy, and then you have to find out what they're doing and stop their evil plan and little mini games where you have to fix up your, your vehicle right before you, you play the, because you'll be like in a jet ski trying to maneuver around and then you'll be doing like a little mini game and then you battle a boss. It's fun. It's corny. It's, it's a couple hours of sit down and play, fun time. I had to play it all in one game, one playthrough, because I can't save it and go back. But yeah, definitely worth a try. It's hilarious. You're gonna love it. The very last game I played was Doritos Crash Course. Um, this is kind of like American Ninja Warrior, where you have to go through obstacle courses as a little character. They take your profile and they kind of make you a little me, a little like me character, and you battle and you go through. It actually gets difficult at the end. There's some times where I was raging because I was like, oh, I made that jump. But you have, you have a floaty character and you have to like really just commit to everything. You have to commit to all the jumps. Um, there was times where some courses I'm just like, how are you supposed to do this? Literally, you have to get a, a complete, like you have to be perfect every time. So not for everybody. Um, the one thing that made me laugh was uh, every time you would, you would fall, you would hear the crowd go, oh, oh, and you could actually see your character crash into the screen. That was cool. Fun. I liked it. I wouldn't have paid for it. It's free right now if you want to try it on Xbox. Um, I think it's on Games with Gold. So if you want to find it, play for free while you can. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think you can compete with your friends if you have a friends list and see who gets, gets the better time. But, uh... I really didn't compete. I, I stayed offline for that one. Well, that's it, everybody. That is all the games that I beat for June. I beat 15 games, and that means I am at 81. So thank you so much for checking out the video. If you're new, please give this a like and check out a couple other beat games I beat videos. And uh, if you are keeping track, where are you at at the moment? I know there is a couple people that are ahead of me, which is kind of scary to say. That there's a lot of people that are like around 70, 80 games, but yeah, we'll see where I go next month. Um, got a lot of games that I'm playing. I'm literally 
just crashing through games and having a good time. I'm probably going to play a little bit more Resident Evil games because there's so many games that I want to get to before Resident Evil 4 is released just to burn through them. And I got to find Outbreak, even though I know the AI is horrible. I don't even know if you can play it online without the server things, but uh, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep on gaming at any level, no matter what level you're gaming. So catch you next one. Bye everybody. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games.